so I recently got back from a wonderful trip to New York where I had to go and meet with the bank to straighten out some paperwork, which I could not do uh, over the phone or via Zoom or even going and getting something notarized. The account was open so long ago that they wanted to see my face and make sure it was me. So after, you know, a 24 hour trip turned into something more, I ended up getting uh, three aborted landings and ended up landing in Hartford, Connecticut instead of uh, New York City. Why is this relevant? Well, they happened to give me a rate sheet for all the different interest rates at the bank that I went to. And uh, looking at those interest rates and kind of laughing a little bit, uh, I thought it would be real interesting to explain specifically what it is about uh, the yield curve and why it's important for banks and why uh, we may not be out of the woods yet. And I wanted to touch on it briefly because I don't know that anyone has, has kind of dumbed it down enough for it to make sense. Yesterday, I had a great conversation with a uh, prospective client who's uh, just sold his practice, sold his business and is uh, coming over to me. And we talked about laddering fixed income. And uh, he was concerned because the practice, luckily, or the, the company that he sold is is worth more than the minimum limit on FDIC. And he wanted to know that his money was protected, as we all do when you get to a point when you're about to retire and you want to do what everyone dreams of, which is making sure your money's safe and living with that money, hopefully for the rest of your life. So I said that we should consider you know, laddering treasuries and, and, you know, why would I do that as opposed to keeping it safe in the bank? <laughs> I don't think anyone's really talked about that. So I drew up a couple of diagrams that I wanted to show. And so Hill, if you'll throw up, uh, the one with the yield curve, that'd be great. So this is the current treasury yield curve where we sit right now, if you take a look at the one year yield curve, that's like 4.65%. Now, so that means that if you perceive that you'll want to sit out the market for a while, and you're just going to have money sitting in cash for a year, you can collect 4.65 from the federal government, the US Treasury, and you're guaranteed that money based on the full faith and credit of the US government, which is obviously much more than a bank because banks basically insure you up to $250,000 and you know what do they invest in they invest in in fixed income of all sorts but even if they were investing in treasuries they're backed up by those treasuries so why would you invest in a bank uh at throw up that second one Why would you invest at 1.64% for one year at a bank, which is the national average granted, you know, and I'll, I'll give you that you could probably get better, better rates than that, but they're not as high as the U.S. Treasury, which is the safest instrument. So that's why you're seeing people pull their money out of their savings accounts and their banks and putting it into those treasuries at 4.65%. Now, Banks only make money on the spread between what they're, you know, what they have on the short end and what they're actually loaning out. We, it's not uncommon to see the people who have a 20 year, 30 year mortgage at sub 3% based on the fact that interest rates have been zero. But now, if you throw that other um, back up again, that'd be great. The yield curve. If you're a bank and you're collecting that much money, you're collecting interest at 3%, but you have to pay out at over 4%, how long is that going to last, right? So if they're not making any money lending money, they're not going to loan money. If they don't loan money, what happens? The economy stalls. We go deeper into recession. That's why this is a big deal. That's what we have for you this week on Money in the Bank with Frank. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this content, you can find me on Money in the Bank with Frank on all of your favorite podcast platforms. 
on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on our YouTube channel. Look forward to bringing you more content like this in the future. Thanks.